Welcome back. It's now 814. You know, remember the mantra of the 60s, sex, drugs and rock and roll here in New Mexico. There was a whole lot more going on. The March issue of New Mexico magazine flashes back to the counterculture values. They're still very much a part of our lives and Taos was and still very much is the hub of the rural commune life. And that's where we begin with the magazine's editor in chief, Dave Herndon. Dave, thanks so much for being here this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. Happy okay. President's Day. Yeah, same to you. Same to you. I see you're working just as much as I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, so since the beginning of the uh, 20th century, New Mexico has been this kind of epicenter for this counterculture. And a lot of it is going on up in Taos with the artists and some authors up there. What do you guys talk about in the magazine with that this month? Um, well, we sort of uh, connect the dots between the early part of the 20th century when um, a lot of uh, people who were artists, uh, bohemians, um, uh, refugees from mainstream America, found um, you know found a, a you know very copacetic uh, environment in Taos you know it was beautiful it was exotic um, there was they were big huge fans of uh, native culture and kind of the spirituality that went along with that um, so it's always been a cultural hotbed and of course the art colonies that started in Taos in the 19 1915 uh -huh. Taos colony uh, of the artists and then Santa Fe in the 20s um, and then uh, later on, there was a woman, um, Mabel Dodge Lujan, who started a, um, an art uh, and intellectual and writers community and very proactively trying to attract free thinkers, progressives, artists, etc., cetera, um, early adopters of you know, crazy ideas like psychotherapy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so um, basically, a bunch of characters and uh, uh, bohemians that you know, found this a very attractive part of the country to come and, you know, you know, have a different kind of lifestyle, and uh, that set a precedent for the um, you know the hippies and the countercultural elements of the '60s. Who, when they went back to the land, this is the land they came to. They they were able to find uh, you know agriculture. You know, there's a tradition of building your own houses here. Um, it was the wild west in a lot of ways. <laughs> still, that that strain, that western strain of right. like you know um, doing your own thing. That all those conditions. Uh, you know, were very um, favorable for the hippie communes of the 60s. You know, I love going up to Taos today and in the magazine you write about 25 reasons to love Taos. Give us a couple of the highlights, some of your favorites. Well, um, the, you know, the, um, the mainstreaming of those countercultural values is, is really expressed a lot in the, in, in the fabric of life in, in Taos now. So um, things that, we, that used to be you know, those values from the 60s, you know, that were considered exotic, you know, countercultural then, like green living, uh, organic farming, local wow. food, um, handcrafted, artisanal, this, that, and the other thing, um, are still very, are very much part of the fabric of life in Taos. And it remains an art colony, of course. There are, um, Ledoux Street is full of, you know, fantastic galleries. Um, there's uh, the Harwood Museum is a great institution. Millicent Rogers is another sort of one of these refugees from uh, mainstream America. Her museum is, is there and her collection of Native American, you know, um, clothes and crafts and all that stuff. Um, and it remains, uh, you know, a, um, you know, the Native presence is still strong there uh, the, with the Taos Pueblo. And um, there are, you know, there there's a, a strange number of people who work with glass, you know, in Taos. Yeah. There are people that work with wool in Taos. There are people that work with clay. So, you know, all these things that we, you know, they're trends that we find e even in the big cities of America now, like the artisanal movement, you know, in Bro places like Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know, is, is most at home in a place like uh, Taos. You know, we've handcrafted beer, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know. It, the list goes on. The sort of it's the ethos of Taos, right. I think, that supports um, a lot of um, independent um, cottage industries, you mm -hmm. know, that are still expressive of those values. And then there are numerous festivals, wine festivals, music festivals. Um, you got, uh, you know, still have the fiesta, the the Hispanic festivals, the right. native, the powwows, etc. It's all it's all still going off in Taos. And here's here's an, um, you know, it's a population of five thousand. Um, so I think it's got an enormous influence for such a small town. You know? Oh, absolutely. You, I, you mentioned it. I love how kind of like the organic and the, the small farming and this green living is just spread to the rest of us and just pop culture in the rest of America every day. That's right. It's things that we start to take advantage and we realize are necessary for, you know, sustainability going, you know, forward.
Absolutely. I'd love to talk about Talis all day, but there's one other thing I want to mention um, that you talk about in this month's magazine is the multimedia artist and musician, Terry Allen. You do a big feature on him. Tell us what it was right. like to talk with Terry. I think that uh, Terry Allen is a perfect example of this kind of person. You know, there's a continuity between these early 20th century artists and free thinkers who moved here and the hippies of the 60s and Terry Allen and, you know, people like him today. Terry Allen is a, a foremost, I think he's most famous as a musician, that's how I know him, because he's from that Lubbock scene of, uh, you know, Texas singer-songwriter guys like the, the Flatlanders, and he's like in with them. Now, normally people like that move to Austin, because that's, yeah, a, you yeah, know, yeah. It's a, that's the you, industry you like town. That singing yeah. community that Austin but, is But it. Terry Allen um, is a, uh, he's got another thing going on besides just his music. He's a, um, he's a visual artist, and he does um, paintings, but he also does multimedia installations. He's a guy that refuses to be pinned down. Okay, real quick, I don't mean to cut you off, Dave. We're running out of time. Where can you pick up a copy of a New Mexico magazine? Uh, New Mexico month? magazine is at your grocery store, it's at your convenience store, your pharmacy, and you can uh, go to uh, nmmagazine.com and subscribe that way. So, um, okay. yeah. A lot of good stuff, and go check it out. Dave Herndon, thanks so much for coming All in right, this morning. Matt. Appreciate it.